Mm. And today on To The Garage, as promised, I'm providing you with your Christmas present. Small caveat is you have to make it yourself because I can't be everywhere at all times, not like Santa Claus, no nothing. And your present is... this. You're going to love it. You're going to want it. Let's start with showing you what it can do. So, this is a manual relay. And this is why it's good. Okay, so we're under the bonnet of our XK8 in our happy place. Let's imagine we've got a fault. Now, I'm going to use an easy fault because it's easy to explain quite quickly. Let's imagine the fault is our horn doesn't work. When we press the button in the car, the horn does not sound. It could be the horn switch. It could be the wiring from the horn switch or the earth from the horn switch to the fuse box and the relay. It could be the fuse. It could be the relay. It could be the wiring from the relay to the horn. It could be the earth on the horn. It could be the horn. All things I don't know. All I know is I press the button and nothing happens. So, first of all, what you do is you get your XK vehicle care book. You'd open it at the page on emergency repairs and you'd look at the fuse box locations. And horn is R6 in the front fuse box. R6, one from the bottom of a T-shape and case color brown. So I'll come over here. Here's the T-shape. One from the bottom of the T-shape, one upside down, apologies. Horn. So let's pull that. We've got this standard array of terminals because it's a single toll, single throw relay, very common. Jaguar paints brown all of their 40 amp single pole single throw relays and practically every single pole single throw relay you'll pick up um, since about 1990 I would guess um, is going to have this array if it's got more terminals it's a different type of relay so let's now use our Christmas present Santa's given us this it's lovely and it goes into the socket like so. There, we've now installed a manual relay. What's that for? You see we've got a switch, and we've got a little LED. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go round to the interior of the car and I'm going to sound the horn. And on a Jaguar, like most cars, it's a press on the uh, centre pad and you don't need the ignition on for that to happen. So I'm just looking across at the relays and when I press the horn, can you see that? The relay is glowing green. What does that tell me? That tells me that green glowing light that everything from the horn push button, the earth on that, the clock spring, the wiring, everything from there to this fuse box and this relay is working absolutely fine because it's trying to trigger this relay. The green light says, turn on this relay, please. So, there's nothing wrong from there to there. My horn is fine there. So what does the button do? Well, if I press the button, it actually operates the relay. So I now know there is nothing wrong with the wiring or the fuses from here to the horn. There is nothing wrong with the horn. There's nothing wrong with the horn's earth. 
So there's nothing wrong either side. So if in this scenario, which is fake obviously, um, my horn did not work when I put back the standard relay, I know that it's the relay that's broken. If the green light had come on, but when I pressed the button, no horn sound, it's probably the horn itself that's broken or the wiring that side. If I can trigger the horn using the button, but when I press the button on the dashboard, the green light doesn't come on, I know for it's the horn push in the car or the wiring that side. So you can see this is a fantastic tool for diagnosing problems. Just gonna whip this back out, replace the correct relay, there's nothing wrong with that one, and you can have one of these in about two to three hours, depending on your skill and how much care you take over it. You can actually make it slightly more sophisticated um, once you recognize the usefulness of this. If you know a bit about electronics, you can add all sorts of features to it. You can certainly get a little blue light going on here to show that there's power going through, etc. But this is a basic quick build and will cost you pennies to do. And you've got all that functionality. Um, not all of the relays in your car are the same and different pin arrangements. So this present is to make single pole, single throw relays for testing your Jaguar and many other vehicles have these. They're, they're very, very common. And welcome to the Christmas lectures this year live from Lincolnshire. The gag that will be lost on anybody who's not British and old. Um, so, <laughs> this is not to teach you guys to suck eggs, I promise. But um, quite a lot of people will never looked inside a relay or, or necessarily know what they're for or how they work. So the very quickest and, and simplest version that I can come up with is there's this little diagram on the side of the relay. And what I'm going to show you is my even simpler version of, of that diagram. And that is... Da, 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 da. I feel like this should be the music from Take Heart. This is the symbol for an electromagnet. When you connect this and this, via a battery, via a tiny little switch, like so, two, one to two. What actually happens is um, you complete the circuit by pressing a little switch and you cause this coil of wire to become magnetic. And it doesn't take a lot of current, it doesn't take a lot of juice in the wires. So the wires can be very thin, um, the switch can be very lightweight, very delicate, the sort of thing you want in the interior of a car is an elegant looking, feeling switch. But it's not got a lot of juice going through it, you don't want it arcing out, you don't want to hear it crackling, um, you don't want it burning out. So that has just made this get very magnetic because it's magnetic, it causes this switch, which is a big heavy switch, to be attracted down and to close this circuit. And this, via a battery, could be connected to your let's say you have big spotlights on the front of your car. So if I connect a low current using delicate wiring to one and two, when I energize this coil, I close a heavy switch that is probably served with some really heavy wires 
because it's going to take a lot of current to complete a circuit that turns on my spotlights. All of this is your relay. Lightweight circuitry inside your car, relay at a convenient location, usually boot, usually under bonnet, occasionally behind the dashboard, and heavy current running off that. Um, this switch is taking a lot of impact. That's your relay. That is the little box that looks like that that we have many many of in our Jaguars and the one we're looking at is brown which means it's a basic one which only has one switch inside it and that switch is either open or off or closed or on there are other sorts of switches. This one, this one's called a single pole, single throw. So a single pole, think of a pole as something that something pivots around like a gate post. And a throw, when you magnetize the switch, it throws itself towards the contact. It's only got one throw, one place it can go when it's uh, working. Over here, it's just in fresh air. If this was a single pole, ooh, didn't rub out well, double throw, then I'd have two contacts and it can go from a single pole, it could throw itself when it's magnetized towards this contact and turn on my spotlights. Or when I turn the magnet off, it throws itself towards this contact and you could have it for whatever mad reasons you want you could have that going to your horn beep so if you wanted you could have a situation where if your headlights are on if you turn the headlights off the horn comes on and when you turn the headlights on the horn <laughs> stops and headlight goes. that's what you can do if you have a single pole double throw relay and there are lots of other permutations but this isn't about that let's get back on to making your toy that you're going to use all over christmas and you're going to like it so for this project what are we going to need just these three main components a few hand tools that you should have around you i think and a bit of time and patience so first we have a Jaguar Brown relay. Uh, the color code of brown for the Jaguar relays means it's 12 volt, 40 amp, single pole, single throw relay. Or the most basic and most common relay on your Jaguar. You can use any single pole, single pole, sorry, single pole, single throw relay that has the standard configuration of pins but I'm using a Jaguar one. If it's not a Jaguar one, it might be a different color, maybe taller in this direction, and the numbers may not be the same on the terminals, but as every relay has a little diagram on the side explaining what the terminals do, then you should have no problems in translating. So, we need one of those. We need a 12 volt LED. You can buy these uh, just with the pins rather than with the tails on. It uh, doesn't matter. Um, probably easier to buy with tails just because you haven't got to solder it onto here. You can work with the Lexi, you've got a bit of spare. Um, and mine is green. And I just think that's a good color code for what we're doing. But again, doesn't really matter. Smaller the better and you need a switch. And ideally what you'd have is a 40 amp rated switch. 
Um, this is not a 40 amp rated switch. It's a 20 amp rated switch. And I think that's okay because the amount of times this gets used is um, nothing like, like a dashboard switch. It's actually controlling anything. And what I was really after was A, neat, B, a little light on it, and C, a short distance from the surface to the bottom of the pins. If your switch is too long here, it just makes this a, a more difficult project. So let's go on to the first um, part of the project. Let's move this to one side. <coughs> Right, so this will be slightly different depending on the make of your relay, but most of them are exactly the same. The shell, the plastic cap, we need to take off. The shell on the Jaguar one is held on by these little sprung tongs. They only just clip on, but there's four of them. Whoops. One on each side. So the trick is to be able to release at least two diagonally opposite ones at the same time in order to get the thing off. If you've got a friend to help you with this, then it's so much easier. But otherwise, that's an option. Pop a little screwdriver in the gap. Um, don't do it on too cold a day. That's just snap the plastic. And then get the next target off as well. And as soon as you've got two released, oops, you should be able to move quickly to the others. You can see I'm struggling. It doesn't matter, but if you look at the map, that's the tang that's sideways onto you, just so we can put the cap on the right way around. It does not matter, but sort of thing that irritates me and there's our cap off and there's our relay from inside before we go any further I'm just going to show you the relay in action so the layout of the pins is this one and this one energize this copper coil and in doing so they turn it into an electromagnet. And what that does is it pulls a little iron core that's in the middle of it down like that. So the core that's attached to this is attracted into the middle of this copper coil. In doing so, this contact here and the thing just below it, that little button, are pulled into contact. That is the switch that is inside your relay. And that carries current along this overly big, but it's just there because um, it needs to be very flexible, take a lot of cycles. This piece of wire is connected to that blade at the back. So when you energize this coil, all it does is it connects the blade at the back via this flexi piece of wire to that contact, which goes to this contact. That's all it does. So the sequence one to two, turns it on, allowing an electricity to run three to five, put in order. So now you'll see why any relay of any make, <coughs> as long as it has this layout, is okay for this project, including one that's broken. Let's just trigger the relay before we disassemble it so that you guys can see it in operation. That's the noise you hear when your relay is operating, and that is all it's doing. The 
because it's electromagnet, I can happily swap around these two wires. Now I'm going positive and negative the other way. And the effect is exactly the same. So now what we're going to do is strip this down, which seems like an awful thing to do to a perfectly good relay, but I want my Christmas present. <laughs> so first of all, I'm going to cut the soft wire and cut it halfway through. There we go. If you've got a different design of relay, don't fret about the detail on this. It basically, you want to get rid of the whole mechanism out of your relay and just leave yourself with the base plate and pins. So now we can flick that off. And the whole top half of the relay is disconnected. And you can see that contact part of the switch. And there is the other contact part of the switch. This stuff is just plastic to keep things from uh, touching the wrong things. This is the electromagnet and it's what's attracting that plate. You can achieve this next bit using Stanley knife, prying it apart with screwdriver and pliers, however you like really. I've got a Dremel with a cutter blade on it so that's what I'm going to use but you certainly don't have to. So I'm basically going to cut through the plastic um, and through pins and all sorts of bits and pieces I just want that base plate. Okay, so we've got all the mechanism off. You just need to establish that you've got access to four pins. One, it's not touching anything. Two, it's not touching anything except this resistor. Three, it's not touching anything. Four, except that resistor. So we've got access to all four pins. In many relays not all there will be a resistor like this one or possibly a diode but it's connecting these two pins and they're the ones which energize the coil the ones that you use to turn the magnet on to make the click happen so that the current can flow that is just to reduce electrical spikes and stop arcing on the contacts and things like that. So if that wasn't there, it wouldn't be the end of the world for our purposes. But if it's intact, you'd like to retain it. If it's a diode rather than a resistor, then you would um, try to make sure that you get your wire in the right way around. You would be a bit more careful about it. but. Essentially, things wouldn't work one way and they would work the other in terms of your energising your coil circuit, but we'll come back to that later. So, that is what we're left with. Um, you can see one of my pins is a little distorted, which will be down to all the mechanical action I've been putting into it. So that's going to straighten up nicely. So my switch has a 20 mil bezel here for mounting, plus a couple of ears. 
have a 20 mil drill. And what I'm going to do next is put a hole in the top of our relay housing. Easiest way to do it and not um, break the plastic is to have it flat on a piece of wood and go through from this side. Mark where the um, ear is going to come through the little spring. Get a clips it into place. Okay, so installed the switch. I'm a little off center. Um, I should have mentioned it before that was kind of intention. I, I certainly didn't measure center, but um, I could use a little bit of space here or here. Doesn't really matter where for the next bit. Next task is to pop a hole in to one of these corners, hence not minding where it's off center. Um, big enough that I can show my LED through it. Um, you can drill a small hole and put the tails through or push it up from the underneath and sort of glue it into position, whatever suits best. So I'm gonna have a little experiment, see how I get on. There we go. So having decided that mine's gonna fit best coming in from the underside, all I'm gonna do, got it nicely in the corner, is I'm gonna put a spot of super glue on the heat shrink and glue it to the outside of the shell. So basically into, into the corner like that. I am gonna put some gloves on because I have been known to glue myself to things before now. And it's a lot easier to take gloves off than it is to uh, st unstick your fingers. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on one of the legs. And then, actually that leg is facing the corner. Yay, that time it got it. So that's nicely attached. Okay, so the next thing we'll wanna do is get our soldering iron going. For clarity, here is the base of my relay. And these are the pin locations. And I'm gonna to refer to those numbers or the pins. Bear in mind it's mirror imaged. So if it's, it says this one is number two, that way up, then when you flip it over, obviously number two is on the left hand side. So pin one which is this pin. I've roughed up that surface there and I'm going to attach the red wire from my LED, which is already inside my cap. And the easiest way to do this is warm up the wire won't take very long because it's very thin and melt a little solder onto the wire this is called tinning it's basically like priming if you were painting it's not going to be the easiest piece of soldering because you're soldering eventually to a heavier piece a heavy piece of metal so then when I want to actually solder onto here, it's going to stick a lot easier. Now, you don't want to be soldering 
like that. Bad contact plus we lack height in here. So what we want to do is solder it down flat like that, making sure that the end's not going to touch anything else. We can snip it off afterwards. So I'm now going to touch that to heat it up. Let's see if we can get some onto the metal platform. Nice bright finish on your finished soldering usually indicates a decent finish, a decent uh, bond. The black is going to go to number two. Now just rolling this back over. Number two is this one. So that is going to be this piece. So what that should mean is, if we connect power to those two pins, that lights up. Which will mean, if your car is trying to switch the relay on, trigger the relay, that lights up. Next, we're looking at our switch, and it has two silver, and one brass terminal, if it's the same as mine. Um, if you're using a different switch, don't worry about that. If you're using one with that little light, don't worry about that. What you're looking for is the two elements that are switched on and off by the switch. On this switch, if you've got the same as mine, it's the two silver ones. The center one is the common, so that's always connected to the switch, which then makes contact with that one. So we start with the middle. That is where our supply line is going to go, uh, 12 volts in. And so we're going to use a bit of red. It's the same technique as previously. Um, and again, I'd recommend starting by tinning the wire. just makes it easier to do. This is relatively heavy soldering. You should always be aware of the fact that you're heating up the metal which is in plastic so you don't want to add any more heat than you absolutely have to. So put my soldering iron down. Oops, table is a bit stiff. Now we're going to try and attach, and again, we're going to go sideways because we don't have a lot of space. And I'm going to use a little bit of blue on the other silver terminal. Okay, so next, and very important, put the switch back in the housing before you attach anything to the other end, else otherwise you won't be able to thread it through. Um, I say that like I'm treating everybody like idiots. I've already done it. <laughs> this is switch number two where I've made, and yes, that's exactly what I did. I wired it all up, and then thought, ah, oh, I can't put it on. So, um, 
yeah, excuse me, it sounded like I was calling everybody a bit stupid. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to leave yourself about two, two and a half inches of wire on either of these. Or, to be more precise, can you go down the side to the bottom and then sort of across the width because that is kind of where the contact is that you're going to really want it to make. And the same on this one. Can you push it down the side like that to give yourself some length to take the lid off and then across and if you can then you know you're of the right sort of length so next we strip the ends of those two wires pull them back out again first More tinning. Okay, so back to our diagram. Number three is the positive in to the circuit that this remote control switch, in essence, is going to switch from. So this is the pole, that's the throw. So we're going to connect the red wire to this one. And we're going to connect the blue wire to number five. So number three is going to this. That's the bit that had the copper uh, wire attached to it. So this area here is like really good for making a good contact because there'll be lots of copper. Across in that direction is good for neatness. And the last one is the blue wire, and that's going to connect to the remaining pin, which is number five. And there we are. So, let's just recap. <coughs> Our LED wires, thin red, thin black. The red wire is connected to terminal number one, this one. So we just confirm, and there is terminal number one. And there's the red wire. The black wire should be connected to number two. So number two is this great big piece here. The actual remote control switch operated by the coil would connect together three to five. Three has your red, there is three. To five, which is the one in the odd direction. So, we're going to leave this one bare for now. Okay, we're on the last, last leg. What we want to do is take a little bit of insulating tape. Not that much. This is sort of a belt and braces approach. What I want to do is just cover over the terminals in there. <coughs> so going in, uh, maybe another file to tuck that down the sides and stick it to the terminals. Next, a bit of thin cardboard, which is thin corrugated. You want to cut yourself a square of cardboard 
that will fit inside the relay shell, like so. And you'll have to put a notch in it to let the wires through. And that little piece of cardboard is going to go on top of there and effectively prevents any contact between the terminals on the switch and anything on the back of here. Now I've done this very neatly and I know that I can clip this back in but it was very snug. Also I've got to tie these up yet. Um, but it doesn't matter if you can't completely get this back in um, because I want to leave it nice and easy to open for future um, mods and already look I've tweaked the wires there that's the soldering iron for you um, so I'm going to actually tape around this so what we're going to do is we're just going to whoops, flick that out one last time put our wires down the sides of the switch, the two heavy ones. So there you go, like that. The lightweight wires for the LED, you could obviously have uh, made them a lot shorter. Probably a good idea to do so. But otherwise, you just grab a pen Wrap them around there a few times. Oops. Make yourself a nice little coil. Pull the pin out. That means they're a bit neater. And then bundle them up and tuck them down another side of the switch. Take the relay and tuck it in all the way around. And as I say, I've done, I've done mine rather neatly. And because I knew what I was heading for, I positioned the wires in the right place and that will snap into place. You can see if I squeeze it a little bit further, just snap in. Um, but what you can do if you prefer is leave that a little bit proud and just tape around the edge overlapping a little bit or if you've got some nice big heat shrink put that around and it'll make the whole thing just a little bit easier to build so this if i push it in there you go and i've got the whole thing back together Let's just take a, another quick look at something else so that you better understand this. If I wanted to look at the dip beam headlights, maybe I've got a headlight not working or my headlights do not work. It's number five. That's sort of the middle one of the vertical column of the T, number five. So that's this one. Pull it out. Put in a manual relay and I haven't got an ignition on I'm just going to try and get to position where you can see both things when I press the button headlights come on so I now know the headlights are actually fine and if they really didn't work at this stage it's either the relay or something that side of the equation I could turn that back off go inside the car Here's an ignition because you need the ignition on for headlights. Um, turn on the headlight, so that's the side light, and then the headlight. And you can see the green light comes on. So you know that that's telling the relay, please turn on the headlights, which means there's nothing wrong with the switch 
fuses, wiring from this end. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed that, guys. Um, enjoy your Christmas present from me to you. Um, it's, it's a nice, simple one, genuinely not difficult to do. If you're not happy doing electronics, uh, this is hardly cutting edge, but if you're know, soldering and things like that, give you the eebie-jeebies, then you know, give it to a friend who's uh, competent and that he trust me, that, that's a very easy little task. Don't go jamming it in everywhere and flicking it to see what it does, because some of the things it can do is like turn on your injectors and pump fuel, and you might not want those things to happen. So use it as a diagnostic tool when something's going wrong, um, but great little thing. So, um, Merry Christmas from me to you. Uh, what do I want from, from you for Christmas? Uh, I'd like to see some nice comments on that. But uh, more importantly, just for the channel, I am trying to grow us just a little bit more. So if you could share this video or any of the other videos that you think your friends would like on uh, to the garage, then I would really appreciate that. Uh, we're just at that point at the moment where I'm putting in quite a lot of effort, which I don't object to because this is my hobby anyway. I'd, I'd, I'd have made a couple of those for myself if I wasn't making them for you. Um, but we're at that point where there's not enough income um, from YouTube to make any difference to how much it costs me to do these projects. If we add a, a few more subscribers, then it might start, start to get to the point where each month or each quarter I can afford to buy some bits and pieces to fit on the car, um, which would be really, really good. So, yeah, not the begging bowl. Please don't think it's that. And uh, if, if nobody was watching, I'd still be doing this. But if you'd like to give me a Christmas present, share the videos and uh, I will see you all in the new year with loads and loads of new stuff working on Purdy, upgrades to brakes, upgrades to the exhaust, all coming soon. The workshop's having some more bits and pieces fitted. I'm going to share those with you. The T4 is going to have some nice tweaks and mods uh, very, very soon. The Cherokee is running beautifully and We've got a few adventures to go on in that, which I want to share with you. And the Navara is getting close to the point where I've got to decide whether I want to keep that and run it um, to big miles or move it on. What do I do with that? Do I get um, another Navara? Do I get a different one of the pickup trucks? Lots of adventures on that. So see you soon. John out.